Proving triangle congruence. There are some nice slick tricks to prove two different triangles are congruent to each other. Same size, same shape, same measurements. To state two triangles are congruent, we need to have three things between the triangles that we know are congruent. And they have to be specific things. One option is we could say we know all three sides are congruent. We need to know one side is equal to the other side, another side equal to another side, and a third side equal to a third side. Notice we use these tick marks to say that corresponding sides are congruent. So the one tick is congruent to one tick, the two ticks are congruent to two ticks, and the three ticks are congruent to three ticks. If the sides are all congruent, the angles must automatically be congruent. So because we use three sides to determine this, we call this the side, side, side congruence shortcut. But they don't all have to be sides. For example, if we have two sides and the angle between them. For example, if I've got one side is congruent to one side, and a second side is congruent to a second side, and the angle between them is congruent to the angle between them, we can say those triangles are also congruent, because there's only one possible way to fill in that third side. Because the angle is between the two sides, we call this the SAS, side angle side. The angle's between the two sides, so therefore the triangles have to be congruent. A third trick is if we have two angles and the side between them. If we know that one angle is congruent to another angle, and a second angle is congruent to a second angle, and the side between those angles is also congruent, the rest of the triangle must automatically be congruent. And because the side is between the two angles, we call this angle side angle, or ASA. The fourth and final option is if the two angles are congruent, and then the side next to them is also congruent. So this time, we're going to have an angle congruent to an angle, and an angle congruent to another angle. But this time, instead of the side in between, we're going to take the side on the edge. We call this angle angle side, or AAS. If we have two angles on a side, then those two triangles have to be congruent. Now, there are two other options that have three letters in them. But just having the three letters or the three congruent parts does not necessarily mean the triangles are congruent. One of them that gets the students in a lot of trouble is when we have two sides and the angle next to them. If I've got a side congruent to a side and a side congruent to a side and the angle next to it congruent to the angle next to it, there are actually two possible triangles that are not congruent that meet this requirement. So side side angle is not allowed. This does not mean the triangles are congruent. It's true if the angle is between the two sides, but it's not true if the angle is not in between the two sides. So be careful of that one. The other one that uh, doesn't seem to cause as many problems is when we have three angles that are congruent. When we have an angle congruent to an angle, and an angle congruent to an angle, and a third angle congruent to a third angle, this actually just means that they are similar. But they could be very different sizes. One could be huge, and one could be small. So that doesn't work either. Angle, angle, angle is not allowed. Most of the time, we remember angle, angle, angle. And if you were to write side, side, angle backwards, it might give you a hint as to why we don't like that one either. Anyway, you can remember those two do not work. But the other four combinations, if we can identify that combination, we can say, yes, we know these triangles are congruent. So here's an example of two triangles. Notice we've got a congruent side. JK is congruent to KM. That's one piece. We've also got a congruent angle. Angle N is congruent to angle L. That's the second piece. But I said we need three pieces to say triangles are congruent. Can we say these triangles are congruent? What we'll often have to do is look into the triangle to see if we know something else about the relationships that say, hey, this other piece is also congruent, and it wasn't part of the given information. 
Do you know what it is? Angle JKN and angle LKM are vertical angles. And we know from our study of geometry thus far that vertical angles have to be congruent. So therefore, we've got two angles and the side on the outside. This is angle, angle, side. We know these triangles have to be congruent. Two angles and the side on the outside. How about these two triangles? Are they congruent? Well, we've got some given information. We know the bottom side is congruent to the top side. We know the left side is congruent to the right side. But is there a third piece that we could claim is congruent? Do you know what it is? This one's a nice little trick. You notice this middle side is part of both triangles. It's obviously going to be congruent to itself. So it's the same shape, same size as itself, because it is itself. So therefore, that's your third side. So we've got three sides. We say this is side, side, side congruence. Here's another one. This one's a lot more straightforward, because there's nothing we have to figure out. We know we've got a congruent side, AB. I'm sorry, AN and side BC are congruent because they're marked with the little tick mark. We're also told angle A is 50 degrees and angle B is 50 degrees. So those are congruent. We're told angle N is 70 degrees and angle C is 70 degrees. We've got three pieces. Do those three pieces work? Two angles on the side between them, angle, side, angle. Yes, that works. We've got two congruent triangles. How about these triangles? They've got less information given to us here. They tell us that SR is congruent to PQ. But is there another piece that we can say is congruent? Because we need three pieces. Similar to the example above, you might have noticed that the center piece, PR, is on both triangles. So if you said, hey, those PR has to be congruent to itself, you're exactly right. That's our second piece. Where's our third piece come from, though? The third piece comes from the fact that SR and PR are parallel. If we have parallel lines, we know that the angles, the acute angles, are congruent to each other. So angle QPR is congruent to angle PRS because they're alternate interior angles. They're the acute angles on parallel lines. So now we've got two sides and the angle between them. Two sides and the angle between them, that's side angle side. And boom, you just use side angle side to prove two triangles are congruent. The homework assignment today is going to take a look at uh, different triangle relationships. And you need to decide, are they congruent? And if so, which one of the triangle relationships are we using to determine the triangles are congruent? Take a look at the homework assignment and let your instructor know if you have any questions.